everyone. Today I'm here to do my April book haul and I gotta say I was quite bad in April. I bought a lot of books that I probably shouldn't have but it is what it is. I bought a lot of books this month so it's gonna be a lengthy book haul. So enough chit chat. Let's get on to the book haul. First book I actually have is a book I got sent by Bloomsbury and that is for and it's actually for my son and it's called Masquerade Ball Accounting Tale and it just has little pictures in it and stuff like that. It's you know I love board books for my son because he loves them so much. The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. Oh guys, this book, I have been waiting for this book for so long. This is the fourth and final book in the Raven Cycle. An amazing series, let me tell you that. It is different. It's different from any book I've ever read. And I've noticed with Maggie Stiefvater's writing, she is different from any author I have ever read. She just has this very unique way of writing that is so interesting. Like. I don't know how to explain it, but if you don't know about this series, it's kind of odd. It's like I said, it's never, it's nothing you've ever read before. It takes place in Virginia, where I live, which is pretty. It's about these four boys that are on the hunt for this king underground to grant flavors, and it's all about paranormal and psychics. And there's just so many amazing things that go into this series, and I'm so excited for this book. I'm already about halfway through, and I'm like, I don't want it to end, but then I know what's gonna happen in the end. I'm just, ugh, but this cover, beautiful, beautiful. I'm so. Um, to read it. The next book I got, actually got because so many people were talking about the last book in the trilogy and they were just saying how amazing of a trilogy it was and I was like I definitely need to jump on this bandwagon. And that is The Winner's Curse by Maria Rutowski. So The Winner's Kiss, the last book of this trilogy just came out and everyone loved it and everyone said this is such an amazing trilogy so I decided just to get the first one. I was gonna get all three but I'm like I just need to test the waters real quick to see if I like it. I haven't read it yet, but I know this is definitely a romance and was mixed in with a lot of political things, so it's very interesting. A girl, I think that's very um, high up in the political standings of her country, and then she buys a slave, and I think they fall in love. I think that's what it's about. I don't know. But I've heard amazing things about it, so we'll just have to see. And I'm excited to read it, as well as any of these books, obviously. Duh. These next two books I got are out of my comfort zone. So I've been really trying to read out of my comfort zone lately, you know, out of my box of YA that I usually stick in, and I feel safe in, and all that jazz. But, um, I've been, I read The Girl on the Train this last year and I really liked it. I thought it was a great mystery and I thought I should really read more mystery because I like it, but not too scary mystery because I'm just a scaredy cat. But I picked up two mystery books and I'm excited about them. First one is Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. I've heard a lot of really good things about this book and I know it's already a movie and it's on Netflix and I just haven't watched it yet. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm waiting to read the book. But I think this is all about a woman who, um, loses her memory each night or something and she wakes up to a husband and he has to tell her what's happened and all that kind of stuff. She starts deciding to write a journal every day when she wakes up to you know, just to try to, to just to kind of help her relive and everything she learns and she writes down to not trust her husband so obviously things are going to get dicey and interesting and mystery and suspenseful so I'm excited. It sounds like the mystery that I would like that's like kind of scary and not like too scary. Now the other mystery I got I think is going to scare the pants off me like quite literally because it sounds like a scary book and that is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I have not read Gone Girl and I don't think I will read Gone Girl because I've already seen the movie and I really I'm not good with that. I, I either see the movie, don't read the book, or read the book, then see the movie. Am I the only one? So if I've already seen the movie, I there's a good chance I'm not going to read the book. <laughs> this one is about a girl named Libby. I think this one's already been made into a movie. Am I mistaken? I don't know. But I haven't watched it yet, if it has been made. It's about a girl named Libby who was seven when her mother and her two sisters were murdered in the state. Satan sacrifice in Kansas. She survived, and she testified that her 15-year-old brother did it. And then years later, she learns that there's this kill club, a society obsessed with notorious crimes, and they locate her and ask for details, and they hope to discover proof that may free her brother. So she's trying to turn a profit for this history, but then all of a sudden she learns things are may not be the same way, and then all of a sudden things get really scary, and she gets running from a killer, and it sounds scary as mess. I'm talking about it now. I don't know why I picked it up, but I'm going to try it. Hopefully it doesn't scare the crap out of me. I'm gonna try it because I've heard amazing things about Gillian Flynn. I gotta read a Gillian Flynn book, so I might as well read this one. Oh, I'm nervous about reading this book, but I've heard so many good things about it. I need to step out of my comfort zone, and I will do this with you. But please don't scare me so much. Okay. What I got is another one by Jojo Moyes, and that is The Last Letter from Your Lovers. So this will be my third Jojo Moyes book that I've read. This one is like, it takes place kind of in two separate ways, if that makes sense. It starts off in 1960 about a girl that wakes up 
in the hospital. She doesn't remember anything. And then she finds an impassioned letter, signed B, from a man who she seemed to be willing to risk everything. So fast forward to 2003. This journalist who she finds a letter saying a plea to her, his married lover. And she becomes obsessed with finding out more about this letter. Like, who read it? Are they still in love? And it all starts in this journey of rekindling this whole romance thing. So I haven't read too many reviews on this book, but I've just, you know, Jojo Moist has a great way of writing that just wraps me up in it. And I'm excited to read it. I plan to read all of Jojo Moist's books. So I think with this one, I think I'll have two more after this. Not sure. And the next book I have already read and reviewed, and there's already a video for it. So that's always a good thing. And it's When We Collided by Emery Lord. And the cover, guys, the cover is so beautiful. Jackson Pollock is. Why the one thinks that? This is Emery Lord's third book, and I have already read her first two. And I gotta say, this is my favorite book of hers that I've read. It's about two characters, one named Jonah, one named Vivi. They're both having really big things happening in their life. Jonah just lost his father. Vivi's dealing Vivi's dealing with a mental illness. I won't tell you more about it, but they fall in love in summer. And this is definitely a contemporary, but it's got a lot of depth to it. It's a lot of, you know, hard things in it with life as it is, all honestly. But it was really good. I really liked it. Perfect read for spring and summer. It's that great light contemporary with a little bit of depth and crunch, you know what I'm saying? It's got a little bit of a bite to it. Does that make sense what I'm trying to say here? Probably not, but it was still really good. The next um, book I got is actually a box that I've not been wanting this for forever. And I finally just bit the bullet and I was like, I'm just, I'm going to get this. I think I've earned it. Is anybody else do that when they buy books? They're like, I don't know. Should I do it? Should I not? I'm like, I worked hard. I earned it. I'm a good person. I just, spoke. at least that's me when I'm like buying things. I'm like, no, too much money. No, I think I want it. No, it's the internal struggle is real, guys. It is real. But I got it because, number one, I wanted it. Number two, my second book in this trilogy has been lent out, and I'm never going to get it back, so I'm like, I need to replace it, obviously. Why not replace it? So that really justified it for me. And you're like, what the crap is this, Heather? You're going on. It is the Infernal Devices box set, and it is beautiful. Not, like, this is okay, but that right there. Oh, that is some beautiful stuff right there. I love how it's all silhouetted. And I even like the Moral Instruments box. I really want that one too, but a little bit more money. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't just for that purchase quite yet. <laughs> it's got all of them on there, but I love the new covers, especially because it, it features them. Will on this cover, and he's just, you know, pulling out a sword so casually, so effortless, so Will-like. Then we have Jim playing his violin, beautiful. And then of course we have beautiful Tessa, Either way, I love this trilogy. It's amazing. On Eight Midnight, I'm on, a, I'm on a Cassandra Clare kick, and I just can't get rid of it. So I got this box set, and I'm pretty darn happy. The next book I got, I just got because the plot sounds so unique and amazing. And that is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grandin. A history book, which again, is out of a covered zone. Doing pretty good this year. But this is different in a history book, where instead, the year is 1956, and the Axis powers of the third reach an, an imperial Japan rule. So Hitler, obviously, a big part of this is almost like if Hitler would have won. It's about Yale, a former death camp um, prisoner, and she's um, in the resistance, you know, trying to get rid of Hitler and all that stuff. So she is in this race. She competes in this race that takes place all through the continents, this motorcycle race. And her one goal is to win the race because the winner of this race gets to meet Hitler. And her goal is to win the race and kill Hitler. Ooh, sounds interesting, does it not? It sounds amazing. And I just can't wait to read it because I try, I'm trying to get more into history stuff. So my husband loves history stuff. So I like it. I'm just not a history girl, you know. That's just not my jam, but I've heard really good things about this book and it sounds really interesting. The next book I got is This Is Where It Ends by this author. I don't want to try to pronounce it because I'm going to do horribly at it and I don't want to do that. <laughs> so this is a interesting book as in it's all about a school shooting, which I know is a very harsh topic, but it's becoming more common in this country, and that is a horrible thing in itself, you know. I think this book takes place from multiple points of views, and it takes place within literally 40, 54 minutes, and you're trying to figure out what's happening, and I'm nervous to read it because I'm like reading about stuff like this, but I've heard really, I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on it, honestly, on Goodreads. Either people like it or they hate it. So I'm trying to see, you know, what I would think of it, I have read one other school shooting book, and that was 19 Minutes by Judy Picoult, which was an amazing book. I highly recommend that one. It was so good. So I don't know how this one's going to go. I'm interested in it because it seems like such a gritty and harsh, you know, topic, but a real thing in this world. So I'll have to see what I think about it. I don't know if I'll be the ones that, I don't know if I'll be the one that likes it or if I do not like it. The next one is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater, of course. 
I am so shocked that I have not yet read this because this was the only book of Nag Studio Otters that I have yet to read. I have read her entire Shiver Train and I'm finishing up The Raven Cycle. So Scorpio Races is the only book of hers that I haven't read yet. I don't know why, but I've already read it and I loved it. It was so unique, so different. Maggie Seawater writes such interesting books. This is about um, this race, quote essentially called the Scorpio Races, where they ride on these water horses that are just evil and they, you know, death happens a lot on these races. And this all takes place on this one island called this be which is an interesting island and Maggie Seagotter wrote it to where you don't know what year it is you're just so encompassed in this island that you don't know what year what's going on it's just so interesting I just thought I'd bring that up we follow two people we follow Sean Kendrick who has won the Scorpio races multiple times and he's fighting for something this year in this race that he's never fought for before and then we follow a new girl named Puck who is entering the race for the first time in order to save her family number one do not pick this up saying you'll be a romance novel it is not it is definitely a fantasy, very unique character building, building all about water horses and struggles and it's so unique. So I definitely loved it. It was very interesting to say the least. It was awesome. So yay, I've read all, my, I've read all Mag Sealer's books. That's pretty good. The next book is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This is such an awesome cover guys. Look at that black sitting pages. I mean it's, I know Lee Bardugo has written the Grisha trilogy, which I still, I do own Shadow and Bone, and I've yet to read it. I don't know why, I just really haven't had the urge to read it, and the plot, do, and I'm sorry to say, the plot doesn't intrigue me as much as it intrigues somebody else. Now, the plot of Six of Crows really intrigues me. I know this is all about a heist, pretty much, is all I know, and that's all I know about it. It's just a heist, honestly, and it's kind of interesting. So the plot of this sounds much more intriguing to me and I've heard so many amazing things about this book that I just had to finally bite the bullet, quit essentially, and get it. So I definitely will be reading this soon because I just have to see what all the fuss is about. I have to know how amazing book this was because the cover is freaking awesome. Ravens. Raven boys. I mean, to 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 gotta read it. Gotta read it, you know? And the last book book in this Paul kids book sorry to say and it's called Frankie the Blankie. I also got this set to me for my son from Bloomberry and it's just a book about a monkey that really loves this blankie because it's cute. So that was all the books I got in April. I know it was a ton. It's it's a lot. A months I buy a lot of books. A lot of months I don't and I don't know. I think next month's gonna be another big. So many books are coming out right now, guys. I can't control myself. Like, stop me from buying books. But don't stop me. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. That would mean so very much to me. And I will see you guys in the next video.